Hey guys, um, Brittany here again. Uh, I'm starting kind of a different category of my series um, about ichthyosis. Um, the next few uh, episodes I'm going to be doing are going to be about um, different age groups and dealing with ichthyosis and you know what to look for, what you know these different you know ages experience while going through, at least my experience while going through ichthyosis. Um, I'm going to do a few different ones. This first one is going to be probably from when I can first remember, which will probably be around three or four up until, you know, fifth grade. So we're going to, you know, do um, from preschool all the way to elementary school. Um, first of all, I remember very little things about when I was little. Um, I do remember scratching all the time and itching. Um, I have home videos of myself when I was sunk, when I was younger and I didn't have very much hair. Um, my skin was really, really dry. I was constantly, you know, I'd always be itching or something like that. But as even as something as young as that, I didn't, as young as then, I didn't let that my skin condition affect what I did. I still ran around and played like a little kid. I still, you know, played in the water made messes, you know, I still did the things typical little kids do. I would just be sidetracked for a little bit by itching. Um, I do remember um, not being very social with kids in the beginning. Um, I remember me being dropped off at daycare and my great-grandma had to come pick me up because, because mm -hmm. I think I bit somebody, which is not typically what I think I would do at that age, but then again, I was little, we all do things, you know, when we're little that we don't, wouldn't normally do. Uh, I remember going to preschool, um, you know, just like any other, or the normal kid, except for the fact I couldn't tie my shoes. Um, I don't know if that was just, I, um, I did have a problem with my motor skills when I was younger. I didn't learn how to walk until I was probably 18 months old, and even when I was younger, I would kind of waddle instead of actually walk. So learning to tie my shoes was a little bit hard. Learning to write was something else that was hard. Probably by then I also discovered I was a left-handed person, which explains why it was really hard for me to learn how to write in the beginning, because my handwriting was fairly sloppy. My uh, aunt decided to put me in uh, Christian school because she figured that kids in Christian school would make fun of me less than kids in a public school. Um, the problems I had in the Christian schools was um, obviously kids made fun of me and teachers had never seen somebody like me. They had never seen anybody that had a skin condition like I did so they didn't know what to do when I itched or you know when I got too hot. So my mom had to tell them you know if she gets too hot if she starts turning red get her inside. Um, a lot of times you know, I did. I wouldn't even notice I was too hot until my teacher was yelling at me to come inside. Um, so, and you know, kindergarten is when I really started forming a relationship with a lot of the friends I have now um, that I've kept tabs on throughout the years. And you know, kindergarten's where you know everybody's new to school. You know, it's not really easy to pick on somebody. I was always the smallest kid in class, the skinniest kid. Um, I could read really well. I always had trouble with my handwriting because it was hard for me to grasp a pencil. I always had to use the little pencil grippers because of my hands. Another problem I have is um, because of my skin, I get cold very, very easily. So, I uh, in, in this school, you had to wear a skirt if you were a girl, and I did not do very well with that because I, my legs would freeze to death. So, I basically have to wear like tights every day and wear a jacket and everything because they kept the classroom so cold. This is also about the time I actually started wearing, um, you know, worrying about, you know, things typical first and second graders worry about, you know, am I going to get all my homework finished? Am I, you know, going to, what are we going to do there in recess? I mean, I, I had a normal life in elementary school would just decide that you know I had asthma I had my I had to keep my inhaler at my teacher's desk if I needed it you know I'd raise my hand and say hey can I uh, have my inhaler 
I would get itchy. Um, I did keep lotion in my teacher's desk in case I got too itchy. I do remember getting really, really hot in second grade to where the fact that I got dizzy. So that was another thing all my teachers had to look out for. The good thing was my mom, and this is something all parents should do um, with kids with theosis. And if your parents forget to do it and you're old enough to understand it, then you can do it too. It's just go to your teacher, go up to your principal and say, like, I have a rare skin disease, you know, ex kind of explain briefly what it is. And just say, you know, I'm, it's not contagious, but I'm not supposed to be outside really a lot because I get hot and don't sweat. You know, I might need extra lotion to keep my skin, you know, from being dry and stuff. Because there are some certain types of ichthyosis that if your skin gets really dry, it can become extremely relevant that you have dry skin. Like mine, thankfully, stays the same color of my skin. It's clear. There are some people with ichthyosis that have purplish type of uh, scales on their skin, so it's a lot harder to to accommodate than the clear ones. Obviously, you know, you have to say, I'm sorry, I'm going to shed a little bit. Um, which my teachers usually never minded. They'd always just vacuum over it after I leave. You know, sometimes it may take a child with theosis longer to do their homework or their classwork because sometimes, um, you know, they, they can't write as fast as other kids because of their hands. That was a, another problem of mine that I had. But the best thing is, you know, just try to let them be a normal kid, but at the same time, you know, let them let it be aware and let it be known that they are, you know, they do have a skin condition. They are a little bit different. And this is also the time that bullying can become present. And, you know, I experienced it probably fourth or fifth grade. Um, I got called four eyes because I had glasses, but that wasn't anything big because everybody got called four eyes if they had glasses. So, I didn't really get made fun of that much in um, in elementary school because it was the same people in the same classes, you know, all the way up through fifth grade. So, I never had a problem getting made fun of then, other than for being small, which wasn't really hurt, you know, it didn't really hurt me because I knew I was small and there wasn't anything I could do about it. So, if your kid is getting made fun of, you know, with it, you know, just, you know, just let the teacher know, just say, look, you know, I, I know there's, because teachers can do something about bullying, you know, they can tell the, the, stu the other students to stop, or they can, you know, find out who's doing it and, you know, say, if you don't stop, I'm going to take you to the principal, because bullying is, is definitely something that can um, hurt somebody's um, confidence, and it can make them, their self-confidence go lower, because they think there's, oh, nobody likes me, there's something else wrong with me other than my skin condition, I don't have any friends, or nobody likes me, or I'm getting made fun of. And every time, you know, somebody makes fun of them, their self-confidence just keeps going lower. So, that's one reason you want to stop it. And another reason is it'll take a toll on somebody whenever they get bullied and get put down. And you don't want it to take a toll so bad to where they almost explode. So, um, that's covers from, you know, preschool to elementary. Thank you for watching.